Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel. I am Dr. Zina. Today we'll be talking about the crown lengthening together with the steps as well. But before we continue, make sure to subscribe down below for more videos. The crown lengthening is an oral surgery treatment that involves removing an excess gum tissue and possibly some bone around the upper teeth not necessarily only the upper teeth, as well you can uh, remove from the posterior teeth, uh, regarding the upper teeth, just to make it them look longer, so it is for better aesthetic. And now I'm gonna say what are the indications for crown lengthening. Number one, as I said, if you did crown lengthening in the upper anterior teeth, meaning that uh, the cause behind doing it, you are having gummy smile and excess gum tissue that is present when the patient he is smiling. So in order to remove this excess gum tissue, we need to do a crown lengthening for the patient. And number two indication is the removing subgingival caries in case the caries are very deep and the gums are covering up the caries so we need to do crown lengthening in order to expose the caries so that we can easily remove the caries and won't hit the gums or gingiva last indication if your gingiva is covering the tooth that needs a restoration like for instance we have a patient that need post and core but the gums is covering the tooth surface so in order to expose the tooth and not cover it up with a gum, we need to do crown lengthening for the patient. So that is the last indication. As you can see in the picture, we have an excess gum tissue that is covering the tooth surface. And in cases that we have a subgingival caries, we cannot remove the caries if we have an excess gum tissue. So in order to remove the caries, we need to remove the gingiva first. Cut the gingiva plus cutting the bone equal to crown lengthening. Now note that very important during the crown lengthening procedure, you need to remove the granulation tissue so that the incidence of the gingiva returning back will be very low. How can you remove the granulation tissue using a curette? If for the posterior curette number seven, eight, and nine, ten, you can use, etc. So now, what are the steps for doing the crown lengthening procedure? Of course, very important. We need to give anesthesia for the patient, infiltration for the upper, and block for the lower. We need to use blade number eleven to make what? To make an internal bevel incision. 45 degrees, circular direction, as you can see in the picture. So as you can see in the picture, internal bevel incision, 45 degree in a circular direction, that is the way uh, how you will do incision. After you are done with the incision, what you need to do to raise a flap, of course. Why you need to raise a flap? In order to expose the bone. So you need to use which uh, instrument to reflect the flap? You need to use a mucoperiosteal elevator to reflect the flap in order to expose the bone. Once the bone is exposed, you need to use a high-speed round bear, move it around the bone of the tooth. Once you are done with removing little of the bone, you need to remove the excess granulation tissue via Gracie curette. All the granulation tissue should be removed because if there is any granulation tissue left behind, then the incidence of the gingiva returning back to its original uh, shape and uh, location will be very high. Once you are done with everything, you need to do irrigation with saline. Saline is, what is saline? Saline is salt and water. That is the saline. Suture is needed in case you are planning to do crown lengthening for patients uh, for gummy smile. 
Okay, but suture is not needed in case, like as I, sa I said previously, if we have a post core patient and we need to finish the patient, the same visit. So we can just stop the bleeding by applying homeostatic agent, ferric sulfate, for 15 seconds, wash and dry, then no suture is needed. So here are the steps in the picture. As you can see, the gingiva is covering the tooth. Then we need to bring the blade, 45 degree angulation, ex reflect the flap via mucopressed elevator, remove the bone via high-speed round bear, and then that's it. Uh, in the anteriors, of course, we need to do suturing for the patient. We cannot restore it, as in this case. To save the tooth, we can do several procedures. First, we raise a gingival flap for access. And then we reduce the bone level so that the bone is a certain minimum distance below the fracture. Different instruments, including the dentist's drill, are used to reduce the bone height, and this new bone architecture is prepared to support.